EOS is gaining traction as a smart contract platform and is now the biggest smart contract platform in terms of on-chain transaction volume. But at the same time, Dan Larimer has of course announced that he's leaving EOS, he's on his way out and we see some worrying signs when we look at the EOS GitHub repository. This and much more is what we're going to take a look at today. We're going to see if EOS can keep its dominating position and what this really means. And we're going to compare it to how Ethereum has been doing and look at the types of dApps that are running on these two different platforms. And is this really a fair picture to paint? We're also going to look at some funny correlations and activity on the EOS GitHub repository and see what they have been doing. But first, of course, I need to remind you that actually yesterday we launched the Ethereum gaming course over at the Ivan Tech Academy, which we have been talking about for a long time. And all of our students, of course, has already gotten access. All of our subscribers has gotten access. If you want in, we have the 299 special just a few days more until the end of January. So if you want to get in for almost half the price of the uh, on the yearly plan, do it before the end of January. The link is in the description in the description. So go and check that out. This news in regards to EOS, because now we're going to get into the actual news comes from uh, the DR newsletter, which I actually like. I'll leave a link to that as well in the description because they now have statistics over the on-chain transaction volumes of the popular smart contract platforms being Ethereum, EOS and Tron. And uh, for a long time during 2018, Ethereum was the dominant player, accounting for almost all volume in terms of decentralized applications. And so far, uh, in 2018, or sorry, in 2018 as a whole, of course, because now we have a new year, close to uh, $13 billion was, transact was transacted on these three platforms together. And only in January, we've seen $1.5 billion in transaction volumes. But since the launch of EOS, and really since uh, July last year, EOS has been gaining traction as a smart contract platform and it's now totally taken over as the dominant platform when it comes to on-chain transaction. And DR writes this. As of January this year, to date, EOS dApps are accounting for 55%, Tron 38%, leaving Ethereum applications with a mere 6% of total on-chain USD volume. So where does this, this shift come from? Because... Uh, it's not a fact that, for example, decentralized exchanges have been started to gain traction on EOS because it hasn't. This is, has all to do with the gambling dApps. People have been started to gamble on EOS instead of Ethereum. And if we look at the EOS dApps distribution by these categories, we have the gambling category, we have the game category, and then we have the decentralized exchanges or other type of uh, dApps and gambling stands for a whopping 65 percent of the total volume of the on-chain transactions so they have almost 70 percent of this total on-chain volume has been gambling games or gambling dApps that have been taking players over from ethereum and now is running it on eos and i can understand why this is the case and why this has gotten popular on eos because EOS is a faster platform to run dApps on. It has uh, delegated proof of stake. Of course, you have these block producers. So everything is much quicker. So I understand that the onboarding process there is simpler. And I can only, you know, give them a round of applause for actually managing to draw that many users into their ecosystem. And I congratulate them for that. The question then is, am I worried? Because it's no secret out there that I program a lot on Ethereum and I like Ethereum. So it, are these statistics worrisome for the ethereum uh, for the ethereum project as a whole when they have so little volume because now uh, ethereum stands for only six percent of the total usd volume when it comes to all of these three platforms that is not a lot and uh, i don't think we should be worried because ether on chain transactions are at an all-time high almost at least um, Previously in January, they were at an all-time high. And this is majorly, according to, to DR, driven by the Make or Die projects, the real financial 
projects on Ethereum. They list a couple of more as well, but it, 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 there are these dApps will lock up a lot of Ethereum inside the smart contracts that has been driven the on-chain tra on chain transaction volume for Ethereum up as well. Even though EOS has been uh, going in a way faster pace, joining in more new users, both in terms of unique addresses actually using these dApps, active users, and in terms of transaction volume, I believe that EOS really is focusing now on these core financial issues that we should be building in terms of decentralized finance, in terms of projects like the Maker uh, DAO. And uh, this really, I think, will play out in the, in the long term, because I don't think that the gambling dApps will be the actual killer app of blockchain. That is not why we're doing this. The killer app of Ethereum and smart contracts, in my mind, is the financial applications, decentralized finance. And that is where um, Ethereum is really, um, is really working hard. And I appreciate that. I'm looking forward to see how that plays out. But the congratulations to EOS for, uh, for actually getting so many active users onto their platform. But with that being said, with the statistics out of the way, we're going to look at some statistics for EOS and see if they actually have slowed down the development since their launch. Have they become a bit lazy and uh, the answer is well maybe yes and no but if we look at their uh, well this first graph is actually this is quite funny the uh, the top part here is dan larimer's personal contributions to the github repository and then someone on reddit overlapped that or overlaid that with the price of the eos uh, token and this is quite interesting because it was all about buy the rumors up to launch and then sell the news. And this is the case with Dan Larimer's contributions to this project as well. It was very active in terms of development in before the launch. And maybe that is not surprising. Of course, there's a lot to do right before the launch. And afterward, after the launch, maybe, you know, he decided that he's out and that's fine. But it's a, it's a funny correlation between Dan Larimer's activity and the price of EOS. And it doesn't stop there because then someone else on Reddit actually uh, put it or just uh, cut this uh, image out as well. And you can, of course, find this on the GitHub repository. And this is the total amount of GitHub activity for the EOS repository. And you can see the same trend. This is not overlapped by the price graph, but you see here that this peak here was around the launch in uh, June, July. And then it has dramatically dropped off. And if we look at the price again, what happened at this point in June, July, well, this is where we're actually, uh, we're very close to the top. And since then we have been going down quite a lot. So there is a interesting correlation between the developer activity in the repository and the actual price. Then we have to ask ourselves, is it a uh, relationship so that, well, in which direction is the relationship? Is there any causality to the fact that uh, the developers stop developing and therefore the price goes down or maybe more uh, more realistically it's the fact that the price goes down and then fewer developers actually are active that is maybe the case but either way around it is an interesting uh, is an interesting correlation and we should um, we should be aware of these situations and we should look more at the project's github repositories to see are these people actually active was this all a way of just doing a huge ICO and then stop developing and just leaving the platform there? Or are we actually going to continue to develop this platform further and make it better, improve it and make room for new applications, new dApps, new smart contracts? It is really important to see where these people are going. And we already know that Dan Larimer is on his way out or has already left um, Block 1 and is not working on uh, EOS anymore. He's working on some other project. And uh, this might not be important since EOS already have launched, but could be a warning flag as well. Um, the uh, Ethereum community is, in my opinion, a very vibrant community. And uh, I, uh, I enjoy seeing all of the progress that they make there. But EOS is a great platform as well. It has different use cases. And that is what we saw in the statistics. They have now taken another type of dApps and really pushed it hard on their platform 
making room for user growth and on-chain transaction volume growth. And that is fantastic. Now, I want to know from you guys, which platform do you prefer? Have you played games or gambled on the EOS platform? And what did you think? What was your opinion? And which platform do you think will win in the end? We'll have both of them with one win over the other. Or is it the room for both of these platforms? Let me know what you think in the comment section. If you dislike this video, you can always hit the dislike button. But if you liked it, you should hit the like button and get subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.